And good morning once again, options traders. Well, it's time for some more random candlesticks. And I decided to do this after I received a few emails regarding a previous video that I've done, and that was called How Many Red or Green Candles in a Row? And there I was looking at different time frames, let's say the course of a year or several years, and saying, what's the maximum number of red or green candles in a row that you should expect? In other words, how long can these streaks be? And I showed that they would fall exactly in line with chance. And part of my point was that you have to be real careful about trying to spot trends if total random noise can produce those same trends. Well, again, some people had written in and said, all right, well, maybe at longer time frames it's true, but what about at shorter time frames? What about day to day or over the course of a month? Are we still going to get this random nature in our candlesticks? And that's a really good question. And let's go find out some more about random candlesticks. And before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's always greatly appreciated and helps so much to promote the channel. So remember the basic idea of why I'm doing these videos for this whole idea of randomness is that it comes down to trends and patterns. Traders try to identify and jump on trends. They look for things like support and resistance or technical indicators, your Bollinger Bands, your RSI. They'll look at candlestick patterns. And I'm not saying that any of these are completely unnecessary or that they don't work at all. I'm saying you've just got to be really careful about thinking that you have some kind of an edge because you have spotted what you think is a pattern. And the reason for that is that randomness can create the identical patterns. Now, here's a slide that we've seen before. In the upper left is the QQQ, NASDAQ 100. Upper right is Tesla. Lower left is NVIDIA. And the bottom right is coin flips. So you can see, even in coin flips, look at this. We got some double tops. We got a resistance level. Got kind of a support level down here. Looks like we went off on a really big sell-off. You can just hear how so many people would create stories about why the market is selling off and why people don't like this stock anymore. Come back up here, hit some resistance levels, and you will find that you will get Fibonacci retracements, Bollinger Bands, everything that you can find in a stock chart you can find from random coin flips. And because of this, you have to be really careful about thinking that you have spotted a trend and to act on it. This is why it's so much more important to hedge those opinions. Trade the market, but hedge your opinion. So the question that we want to address here, is this whole idea of randomness going to apply at smaller time frames? Well, let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet and take a look at a real example. All right, so here's an Excel spreadsheet, and just for starters, so that you understand the idea or the theory behind what we're about to do. Let's just do it with coin flips. So this first column is just counting. We're going to look at 250 flips and actually 251, we're starting at zero. And then in this column, we're just going to show the heads or tails, what actually showed up on the coin toss. So right here, we got a streak of four. We got four tails. So that's just counting them out right here in this column. Then we flipped over to a head, just showing that I had one head right there. Then we got another block of tails, this time it was five. Then we got a block of two heads, and so on. So it's just counting all of these blocks. And so one of the questions we can ask is, well, how many ones should we have in this column? How many twos and threes and so on? Well, if you think about it, on average, the coin should go heads, tails, heads, tails, and so on. And we can see that because right here is the average of that column, really close to two, exactly what you would expect. We also see the maximum number that we got was six. The expected value, which I talked about in that previous video, is about eight. But again, very much in line with chance. So over here, we're actually counting the number of ones, number of twos and threes and so on. So out of 250 flips, we got 118 heads which is about 47%. So you would expect about half. And if we want to look at the counts, it should be about 125. Well, we got 118. But now think about this. How many twos should be in there? 
Well, in order to get a two, you absolutely had to have one tail before it or one head. And half of the time you're going to get a head and half the time you're going to get a tail. So in order to get tail followed by tail, that will only happen 25% of the time, or again, about half as often. So take a look at this. We went from 118 to 67, got cut roughly in half. We can see the percentages here. Went from about 50% down to 25%. Statistically, we would expect about 62 and a half of the heads to show. We got 67. So if we look for streaks of three, that should be cut in half again. Because in order to get a three, we had to have one and a two, and then we had to get another tail. So that would be a half times a half times a half, or one-eighth of the time, or 12.5%. And look at that, 13.6%. So you can see that this is just falling almost perfectly in line with chance. Now over here is a graph showing the individual ones, twos, and threes that we got. And the largest number we got was six. That's showing right up there. Again, the expected amount would be eight. Now if I hit F9 in Excel, it will recalculate the sheet for us. So let's give that a try. And there we go. And you can see that the numbers, there we got closer to 50%, roughly 25%, roughly an eighth or 12 and a half percent, all the way down. Notice again that these percentages get cut in half roughly at each step. That's exactly what you should expect. So let's do this one more time. And there we go. Got 126, again, real close to exactly 50%. Got cut in half when we looked for streaks of two. We're at about 60 heads. We looked at streaks of three, about 28 of those. Again, cut in half. Each row gets cut roughly in half. So you can see that long streaks are going to be relatively rare. Here is a streak of eight that occurred. Here's one of nine. We didn't get anything past nine. So anyway, we can carry this same idea out in the stock market. Instead of heads or tails, we're just going to use up or down. So let's do that. And that's what I've done over here with the S&P 500. So I've gone back from, I started with January 19th, just to give us one day to figure out the up or down. And we're going to look for 250 trading days, which is roughly the number of days in a year. We went all the way out to the end of 2023. So what we're looking at are the number of up days and down days. So we closed at 389.36, went to 395.88. That's an up day represented by a one. Increased to 400.63. That's an up day represented by a one and so on. Then over here, we're just going to look at the individual blocks of either up or down. So here we had two days in a row where we had up days. Then we had a down day right there. So that's just one. Then we got one, two, three up days. And we got one down day over here. Again, got one, two, three up days, followed by two down days over here. And then over on this side are the totals. So if we go and count the individual number of blocks, we got 64 blocks of up days, 63 blocks of down days. So let's go and count how many up days that we had, blocks of what we might call one. Well, there were 64 out of 127, or look at that, 0 0.504. Statistically, you should expect 63 and a half. We got 64. How many blocks of two should you expect? Well, we should expect about 31.75, almost 32. We got 31, or almost 25%. Again, half as much as the previous row. How many blocks of three did we get? Well, we got 16. You would expect 15.88. Let's call that 16. Or roughly one-eighth of the time, 12.5%. And look at that, 12.6%. Again, half as much as the previous row. And this just continues all the way down the line. So once again, the main thing to take from this is that if you're one of these traders who thinks that you can spot a trend or that we definitely have the momentum going here and the market's on fire and going to continue higher, all of these other things that people feel, 
you have to realize that is probably not true. It's probably a misperception. You can get very long streaks, much longer than you would expect, just by pure chance. Even in this case, we got a maximum of eight streaks right there occurred one time throughout the year. A lot of people find that hard to believe. They happen all the time. It does not necessarily mean that you can just go buy calls or puts because the trend is obviously intact and going to continue. Or by the same token, it doesn't mean that it's about to reverse because the trend has been going on too long. You hear that a lot too from traders. So anyway, I just thought this would be another interesting study to go and look at it statistically if we compare it to coin flips and then looking at real market data and look at how they fall exactly in line with chance. So the biggest point to take from this presentation is remember to trade the market, trade the cards that you have dealt in front of you, but hedge your opinion. And to do that, you need to understand your options strategies. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a Candlesticks and Technical Analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.